Um, you know, obviously the last few days in, in crypto, the, the kind of the talk of the town has been the Luna Foundation guard um, and, you know, the, the UST peg breaking down. Can For listeners, maybe anybody who, um, you know, hasn't heard about this or you know, maybe anyone who just doesn't really understand the dynamics of, of everything that's happened over the last, you know, call it 72 hours. You kind of walk us through, um, you know, what, what happened and, and, you know, what caused that meltdown and as well as like, how does the how does the uh, Terra protocol work? Yeah, so the Terra ecosystem is basically based around algorithmic stable coins, and those are very different from collateralized stable coins. And so for collateralized stable coins like Tether or USDC, uh, they they hold a certain amount of assets uh, that can be redeemed, uh, you know, for those tokens. Basically, you, you're at least at least supposedly backed one to one by assets. Whereas in an algorithmic stable coin, they use software to try to make a token worth a dollar even though it's not actually backed up by any dollars, right? It's just kind of this artificial mechanism to try to maintain it at the value of a dollar. And as one might expect, those have been fraught with failure. Uh, you're Kind of the mechanism is you're trying to be like an emerging market central bank, except without capital controls and without an economy to tax. It's kind of like this based on this first in, first out, uh, and a really shaky set of, of kind of, you know, economic principles that can only last so long. Uh, and so the way that that worked is, you know, if, if, if they're, stablecoin was below the peg it was it was below a dollar you could you could basically arbitrage that uh in order to get that back up using their other token which is luna and so basically what it does is it pushes the volatility over to luna and as long as their stablecoin demand is increasing it it it, it, you know it also increases the value of luna over time generally uh but the problem is that the demand for that was artificial it was based on artificially high yields from various VC incentives and things like that. Basically, it wasn't a sustainable organic demand. It was kind of this, you know, you can call it a Ponzi scheme. It's, it's, not, it's not really far off. Basically, it's it's this kind of front-loaded, unsustainable type of, of thing to draw capital in. And, you know, those are vulnerable to attack. Uh, even without an attack, basically, UST uh, surplus yields were going to dry up. Uh, and so basically, we saw a, a run on the bank, uh, you know, Basically, people started to see that it was failing, and they all wanted out at the same time. And so Luna's equity was brought down to basically zero. You lose 99% plus of the value, it goes to zero, uh, and the peg breaks. And so this was something like, you know, if you combine Luna and and their stable coins, it was it was nearly a 60 billion dollar, uh, you know, protocol, and that was wiped out in a matter of days. Uh, and you know, a, a challenge is that they, you know, they I think they saw the writing on the wall. They were worried about the possibility of a death spiral, so they started uh, buying other assets ahead of time, uh, kind of like an emerging market holding treasuries or gold as a reserve currency that they can sell if they want to support their currency. And so they bought Bitcoin, and then they had to sell that into the market, uh, or you know specifically they were loading it to market makers to do you know various ways to try to defend the peg. Uh, and so they had to sell Bitcoin into a weak market and. Now there's contagion because multiple funds had exposure to it. You know, this was kind of like a, a Lehman Brothers moment for the crypto space. And, you know, if we zoom out for a while, so it, there are a number of people warning about this. Uh, I, I warned about it in, in the month ahead. And if we zoom out of why this happens over time, right, if you look at the at business cycles, right, so, and, and I've shared this with you before, that the PMI cycle, so purchasing managers index, uh, you know, that's kind of a gauge of, of is economic growth accelerating or is it beginning to slow down? And it's not whether it's growing or shrinking, it's whether it's accelerating or decelerating. Although if, if the number gets low enough, it becomes outright shrinking. And what you generally see is that during accelerating periods, that's when liquidity is flowing. It's easy to get credit. Often the Federal Reserve is pumping money into the market. Uh, you have these, these you know economic booms in the United States and many other parts of the world and anyone with like a narrative can sell these tokens, these unregistered securities and off, offshore regulatory gray zones, right? They can they can just pull in capital. And when you have those declining PMI environments, liquidity being withdrawn, you know, it's like the tide going out and anyone who's, you know, swimming naked gets exposed, or at least a lot of them. And we generally see these boom bust cycles. Uh, and so that that's essentially what we're seeing now is that after a big giant rise up in PMIs and economic growth and liquidity, we're now getting a pullback in all those things. And so all these things that were kind of based on first in, first out, Ponzi-nomics, uh, you know, the vast majority of that is just getting cleared away. And unfortunately, that's a very large percentage of the, of the crypto space.